going to hear from Michelle Goldberg today. I'm just going to do a little introduction. Um, we're going to talk to, about the WBLS Innovation and Collaboration Grant. And just to refresh your memory, the WBLS um, Innovation and Collaboration Grant is offered annually. And you guys approved an amount of $10,000 per year for as many projects that can be funded by $10,000. If they qualify, they're eligible, and they are innovative and collaborative. A group here at WBLS evaluates each application that comes in, and we decide collectively who will get a grant. So Michelle Gobert at the Cranon Public Library received the first ever innovation and collaboration grant in 2016. So projects started in the fall of 2016, and will be ramping up at the end of the school year because it involves school, the library, a couple museums, and future, right? Artists, take it away, Michelle. I'm not okay. going to introduce you. You can do that yourself. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, my name is Michelle Bobert, and I am the director at the Crandon Public Library. Uh, prior to being the director of the Crandon Library, I was at the uh, Three Lakes Public Library, the Denver Library, for 15 years. So um, uh, I've been part of WBLS for 20-some years. So, um, I first of all want to say thank, thank you to the WBLS staff and to the WBLS board for allowing uh, public libraries in your system to apply for this type of grant. Um, it really was an exciting project for us. Uh, the library board and I um, worked together on the, on the proposal and um, we were excited about the outreach that it allowed us to do to our community. and. Um, so thank you very much, and we'll jump right in. So as Ann said, it started in November of 2016, went to May of 2017. The grant overview. The overreaching mission of the grant was to offer programming that expands access to education, learning opportunities, and allows for social connectedness. Um, we partnered with the school district of Crandon's art department to develop and sustain an art club for middle school middle and high school youth. So this was a project that I actually wanted to do for quite some time. As a um, young student, I attended the um, Lakeland Union High School and was a, a Lakeland Union High School graduate in Manaqua. And every year we actually um, were fortunate enough that we went to the Liaki Woods and Art Museum um, Birds and Art. So I knew what a wonderful resource the Liaki Woods and Art Museum was. And I wanted to be able to take our, some of our art students down to that, um, to the museum. And so I have been uh, chasing our art teacher around for many years, saying, when are we going to do this? When are we going to do this? How can we do this? Um, and so uh, when the grant opportunity came along, um, I thought, great, this is how we're going to work it all in. So, so there's actually um, WVLS said that as part of the grant application, we had to read through the Aspen Institute dialogue on public libraries. There was um, some background information that they wanted us to read. And part of that was defining the public library in the digital age and how our grant would be part of this initiative. So um, first of all, we started with the library as people. And um, the Aspen Institute views the library, public library in the digital age, the library is three different things. Um, the first being the library is people, the second the library is place, and the third as the library as a platform. So the library is people, building community relationships. Our first program that we did as part of the grant was that we invited uh, Crandon High School alumni Meg Springer back to Crandon. Um, it actually happened over our uh, Christmas break or over her Christmas break. Meg is currently um, working on her master's degree in ceramics. She um, graduated from Crandon High School four years, five years ago, went to um, Duluth, got her undergraduate in art, and found, really discovered a passion for ceramics. And um, so she is now in Montana State University getting her degree in ceramics, her master's. She also did a significant amount of traveling. Um, her grandmother is actually was the friends of the uh, pre president of the Friends of the Library for many years, 
and um, she traveled a lot with her grandmother. And so I knew about that. I knew Megan, and I knew um, that her ceramic was actually inspired by her trip to Europe. So we invited Megan to come and to give a talk um, uh, to kick off our event or our grant, and it was Art Appreciation at Your Library. Um, we had approximately 20 people attend her program, um, all the way up for some, from some art students to her grandparents, <laughs> of course. So it was a really nice event, and it also allowed us to, um, to, to show to the community that we are proud of our graduates and their success which, of course, speaks to the current graduate, the current students saying, oh, you know, my, I, can, I have, uh, there's things that I can do. You know, I think as, um, as high school students, you would never even contemplate, actually, Ann and I were talking about the idea of, you know, getting a degree in ceramics. What do you do with that, <laughs> you know? So this allowed the art students to come in and go, wow, there is, you know, art can be a career. So she talked a bit about that as well and um, offered a really inspiring program. The other thing that we did was the library is place. Um, we hosted a, a specific art club activities at the library, which allowed the youth to visit the library, utilize its space, and ultimately become familiar with its mission in the community. So um, each year, March is Youth Art Month. And in the past, we have worked with the school district to offer um, a traveling art exhibit, um, middle school and high school. This year was a little bit different because we participated in the grant. We worked with the kids ahead of time and we explained that they would be curating the exhibit. So in the past, the art teacher, you know, got all this stuff together and wrote up the little cards and promoted it. And this year it was the art club students that did that. So they decided on the theme, they decided on what works of art would be available um, at the library, and then that's what they did. They came in after school and they put the art um, exhibit together for us. And we had both 3D art and we had, um, you know, just regular art. Part of the grant money went to purchasing display walls. Again, in the past, we have used the school district. Um, display wall, art walls, and the grant money allowed us to purchase some wheeled walls so that we can continue to offer this kind of program on an annual basis. And we also um, purchased some display, you can see there, the display boxes, tabletop uh, display boxes, which is really neat for the kids to put their 3D art in, and then it gives the art a whole different look when it's um, professionally mm -hmm. displayed. The third was the library as a platform. No longer do libraries offer information. They connect people to ideas, information, and opportunities. As part of the grant, um, the library supplied the school district, the art club, with information on M.C. Escher, which as you know is the current um, display being highlighted at the Leahkee Woods and Art Museum. So um, we did give them information, but again, it was us connecting the, their interest to the library. And then I also wanted to really focus on the fact, the word opportunity. So the emphasis on opportunity. Um, our tag byline is expanding your world, but I take great pride in expanding their world. The youth in our community, we live in, um, we live in Forest County, which unfortunately has a, um, a high poverty level. A lot of our students probably don't get the opportunity to go to museums, don't get the opportunity to go down to downtown Wausau, walk the 500 block, and that's just what we did. Using your grant money, we took the art club and um, their instructors, um, he's an aide in the classroom, we took them to the Liaki Woods and Art Museum. We had a wonderful day, it was great. The kids really had the opportunity to, we did it, um, we did not do a guided tour because we wanted the students to experience just, wow, walking into a museum and being able to walk around and, and figure out what they wanted to do. So it was a really great opportunity. 
after we went to the museum, like I said, we went to the 500 block, and it was really fun just to see some kids get excited about that. Um, this young man, he's a wonderful young man. He actually, I don't have a picture of it, but he um, had, for his art project, he took and refurbished an old piano. <laughs> and we actually had the piano moved in to the library for the whole month. And um, it wasn't just refurbished as, you know, an old antique. It was uh, teenagers refurbished. So there was graffiti, there, but the graffiti had meaning to it. And, and um, he would visit the library probably once a week. And um, one time he came in and I found him lying on top of the piano, <laughs> giving it up. <laughs> So um, it was really great to connect with those students as well. So I had a really great time. Michelle, did they have a story yes. about him on Channel 12? Was yes. It? I remember seeing that. Being yes. cool thing that was. Yeah, so it was really great yeah. that Channel 12 yeah. had, um, you know, information about his piano and his project, and then two weeks later that piano was at the library. So it was great. So our anticipated and our achieved outcomes from the grant. The anticipated outcome was that the proposed program um, is that each entity involved, as well as the participating youth, would more fully understand the role the public library plays in the development of the community it serves. And um, as part of the grant application, it was also important for us to, to um, explain the collaborative partners' mission and uh, the library mission is, of course, to enhance the value of the library as a community resource by developing and pro promoting lifelong learning opportunities and collections for all ages. And then the school's mission is to inspire all members of the school community in a learner-centered environment that cultivates positive character traits, fosters personal commitment to academic excellence, and celebrates diversity through the collaborative efforts of staff, parents, and community. So they, too, focus on collaborative um, outreach. And so we work quite a bit together. Um, and But this was the first time that the art department and the library worked together. So we feel that both missions um, um, were accomplished as part of our outcome, anticipated outcome. Um, results, future plans, and advice. Um, one of the other results that I want to focus on was the student connectedness. Anytime a student um, can feel connected to a member of his community, um, to an adult member of the community, you know, that really means a lot. Um, it gives, even in a small town in small northern Wisconsin, a lot of our children or ourselves are isolated, whether it's technology that's isolating them, or they themselves just feel isolated. But um, to know that the public library director knows those kids' names and that we can talk to them. I actually um, volunteered at post-prom. And sure enough, one of the art club students goes, hey, Mrs. Gobert, you know, and started talking to me. And, you know, that connectedness was not there prior to him being part of this, to this grant opportunity. So that's really important. Um, we did have a successful art show. Our future plans is to continue that. We're working with the Friends of the Public Library, so it's actually the Friends of the Public Library working with the Art Club. Um, there's only one little minor misstep in that our um, art teacher um, has is retiring this year. So, um, Mr. Murkowski, <laughs> and so um, we will have to, you know, make that connection with the new art teacher, but hopefully he or she she knows the benefits of the Leoki Woodson Art Museum, and we can work together on making sure that this is an annual event. And um, my advice is pizza, because if you feed them, they will come. <laughs> so um, each time we said, okay, kids, we're going to meet and talk about the grant, talk about curating the art show, I said, there's pizza, and whoop, they, they showed up. <laughs> so, and um, write a final news reader news release wrap up for the community as well and publicize that. Um, and that's really great because I hope to include in that the fact that Leoki Woods and Art Museum, of course, just was honored by 
IMLF, right? IMLF. Yep. Um, so again, giving those kids the opportunity to attend, to visit um, an award-winning museum really means a lot. So, so thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yes. Um, so. <laughs> You mentioned <laughs> you mentioned there were 2D and 3D. Is the theme of the art to art show influenced by the exhibit they'll be seeing at Lee Yankee or kind of what it, they come up with? It was not this year. Okay. Um, but that could be something for sure in the future. This year they curated, it was more based on, um, they had uh, animals. So there was a lot of, but it was of course not just regular animals. It was um, imagine. Yes. Okay. And, you know, they're teens. So. <laughs> so there's a lot of graffiti. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, uh, I don't recall her name, the young lady that has the uh, degree. Yes. In, My, yep. uh, does, is she using it now or what is she doing? She is. Um, she She's still working on her master's in ceramics. So, um, but she is selling some of it. But um, mostly, she's out in Montana um, getting that degree, and um, she hopes to become a professor. She hopes mm -hmm. to work in an uh, you know an art department somewhere. Um, but um, again, that was you know what what are you going to do with this yeah. you know? And her parents are saying. How are you going to pay the bills with this? <laughs> because she was saying, I really want to go back to Europe. Because that, you know, she did, her presentation was wonderful. It included you know, um, architecture. It included the history of the places she went to. And of course, she was saying, I really want to go back. And her, her parents are in the back row going, she better find a job. <laughs> but, you know, um, locally, her ceramics um, are, because we also put her ceramics on display for a month. And um, we said you can purchase this through her parents, and she is selling that. Mm -hmm. So nice. Yes. So it was really exciting. Recognizing that this is a new initiative, going forward, what would you change, expand, build, correct? Um, or maybe it's too new to even think about that. But just wondering. Well, hone. You know, I my. Not so much about this project, because I think this project was, you know, but but as far as the grant altogether, I think um, I have a lot of ideas <laughs> <laughs> and um, of this kind of stuff. And it's just um, prioritizing and saying, okay, if I know that WVLS needs grant application by May 1st, when can when should I start putting my projects down on paper? You know, and trying to figure out which ones are innovative and collaborative versus just another fun idea that we have. You know, so but I really liked because, like I said, I had this idea for many years to get the kids down to Leaki. Um But what this grant did and the grant application is it pushed me to say, okay, why do I want to do this? You know, I think sometimes. And I've talked to the library staff about this too. I think sometimes programming at the library, you know, it's it's really kind of fun. We have all kinds of fun ideas. You know, we get to do art with the patrons. We get to knit. We get to you know do story hour. But then sometimes I think it's really important that we take a step back and say why? Why are we doing this? And what is the what is the outcome that we want to happen? Because we're teaching knitting at the library. You know. And so um, when you work on a grant project like this, it kind of makes you take that step back and say, OK, um, why are we doing it? What's the anticipated outcome? And how is it going to benefit the community? You know, and what partners? We do a lot in, in Crandon with um, the Board County Health Department. Um, and that was another big grant that we were a part of. Um, working with them and we did um, a 5K color run and um, but because we know that in Forest County we really struggle with our health numbers. Um, we're at the bottom of the state. So that's always a um, something that we're like, okay, why are we doing this? Because we want people to be more active. We want them to be 
be more connected in our community, and the library fits that, you know, that connectedness. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>